I have issued myself a challenge. The gauntlet has been thrown. Sort of a yard work gauntlet, I guess. Hello, Minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, I decided to enter a challenge, specifically the 30 by 30 challenge. That is 30 watercolors in 30 days. And it's the 30 by 30 direct watercolor challenge. Now this is being spearheaded by Mark Tarot Holmes. He wrote the book Direct Watercolor and also Urban Sketching. And this is just a challenge that seemed the right fit for what I'm wanting to do, how I'm wanting to develop my art and my skills. So I was kind of anxious to get involved in this one. I have a demo and as we get into that I'll talk a little bit more about direct watercolor and what that means. I'll also show you his direct watercolor book. But the point is to do a quick loose watercolors with a minimal amount of sketching and drawing with pencil. Now if you're interested in participating you can personalize this challenge in any way you want. I will put the links down below to his blog where all of the parameters are listed. I will also put a link to the Facebook group where, he, where it's specifically the forum for this challenge. But there's also a hashtag which will be in the description. So you can follow people involved in this challenge throughout all the social media with the hashtags. Now here on YouTube, Anne Laurie Jacquard from Following the White Rabbit is one of the official five participants. She will be documenting her part of the challenge on her channel. I'll put a link to her channel below. So I'm sort of an unofficial participant, but this is just something that I felt fit me and what I wanted to do, and, and I'm really excited about doing it. Now I know hot on the heels of that is World Watercolor Month, which is the month of July, and I always think that's a great month too. There's a challenge involved with it, and um, Charlie O'Shields has some prompts for that month as well. Now most of these challenges are very difficult to me because of my video upload schedule. And I end up just doing a few in a month, even like October, which I really love. I don't get to do all 30, but I really want to try to do this. And I think I can make these paintings be very quick, very loose, not take a lot of time to do them. And that's sort of the point of the challenge for me. So I'll be sharing them throughout my social media and I'll be sharing a few in video here on this channel. So I'm really excited. I hope you'll participate. At the very least, I hope you'll take advantage of the hashtag that I put down below and follow what's going on with other artists. Maybe join the Facebook group if you want to see what's going on over there. So this is pretty exciting, buddy. We got this challenge coming up and it's going to be every day for 30 days. What do you mean you don't believe in challenges? Oh, you're afraid of them. Why? Because of how bad you blush. So, Mark Terrell Holmes the uh, guy who's spearheading this challenge is the author of this book, Direct Watercolor. This is where the challenge names co name comes from. And I won't spend a lot of time in this book. I will have a link in the supplies below as usual. And so if you want to check out this whole idea, you can buy this book. But um, basically the, s the simple idea is quick, loose, expressive watercolor. Minimal to no pre-drawing or drawing done with the actual watercolor or ink if that's what you prefer. It's a very very spontaneous process and the idea is just to let the watercolor uh, work on its own. Basically set the conditions, you've heard me say that before, set the conditions and let watercolor become your partner and the more that you can do that, the more that you can dispense with the pre-drawing, the carefully planned drawing, the more you'll get that feel in your watercolor. Now you know my position on realistic and tight versus loose. I think there's a place for both and I enjoy both. But beyond just doing loose work, this kind of challenge or this kind of approach just pushes you. It, it helps you be more expressive even in your tighter work. So this is one of the reasons that I'm doing this challenge. Not to change my style to a loose style necessarily but just to uh, to learn to get out of my comfort zone to feel more expressive to let watercolor express itself more and my partnership with it so anyway uh, let's get into my demo and i'll have a few more words to say about that and how i approached this and how i think i'm going to approach this in my work 
All right, so we joined this one already in progress, mainly because I forgot to hit the record button. But I hadn't gotten too far, so, um, you know, it's funny because uh, immediately I find myself falling into old habits. And it's important for me to really analyze that as I look at this because the whole point of this challenge is to push myself in new directions. And I got really fiddly, uh, tip typically in a sketch like this. Uh, the process that works for me is to lay in the patterns of the lightest foliage and then backfill around those with deeper values. I guess what I forgot to do, what I wanted to do, was a little more simplification. Now what I'm looking at, we've had a lot of rain here, so I, I was hoping to be able to do more of this as plein air, but uh, this is not. This is uh, actually a freeze frame from a YouTube video. I don't know if you've ever seen those virtual hikes that you can put on. Uh, this was, I forget where it was, but uh, I had this on and then, you know, the person recording the virtual hike was headed down this path and it was this just beautiful little sunlit pathway that kind of curved around beside a lake. And what was striking about it was the shadows that fell across the path. And so I wanted to capture that in a pretty quick loose sketch. So already off the bat I'm getting a little more fiddly with the foliage than I had intended to get. So it's just sort of a knee-jerk fallback way of doing it I guess. Not that it didn't work as a sketch but it's not the way I was trying to push myself. Anyway enough of that. So basically as I said I'm laying in the light lightest values or laid in the lightest values of the foliage and I'm just backfilling the deeper values. The forest sort of went up to the left in a high embankment and on the right it sort of dropped down to a lake and you'll see a little bit of that lake I lay in a little later. I'm just trying to vary the colors and the hues so I'm using combinations of Viridian, Daniel Smith Appetite Green Genuine, M. Graham Nickel Quinacridone Gold, M. Graham Turquoise, some M. Graham Anthraquinone Blue, just varying the green tones throughout. I wish I had varied them a little more than I did, but so, you know, these are all things for me to think about in the next one. And these cool shadow areas um, are sort of line up with, and you'll see at the end where it all sort of comes together. They line up with the sun uh, casting these shadows across the path. And that was what I thought was the most striking about this scene. It doesn't really get very interesting until that point. So where you see these deeper tones going up the embankment to the left, that is a sort of shadow being cast um, from above or to the right, I guess, and across the path. You know, I think one of the most fun things for me to paint is light. Uh, I mean, I do enjoy landscape. I really enjoy uh, portraits. Um, I haven't done animals in a while, but I enjoy them. Um, but it almost doesn't matter what I'm painting um, if there is really interesting light and shadow. And I think during this challenge I'm going to try to gravitate towards strong values, strong value changes, dynamic shadow and light. Here we skip ahead a little bit. The only thing I put in that you didn't see was that back tree and that back tree line. And dropping in the sky and now the lake. This is pretty much a flat blue. This is just straight up anthraquinone blue, I think. We're getting down to having most of the um, foliage value patterns established.
I'm being treated to a thunderstorm right now, so you can hear that in the background. So here I just mixed up a deep sort of color for the uh, tree trunks that kind of weave in and out of these foliage on the right. Like a perlene maroon, I think, and a viridian. Might have been some moon glow in there. Just sort of a, a deep gray, red, brown, gray something. It's really hard to, to tell people what colors I use because it's just a whole big amalgamation of colors I put out on my palette and I just bend them one way or the other. So when you say, what color is that? It's like, well, um, it's about 20 colors. Well, okay, not really 20, but this was a distant hill or tree line just going in the back. Give it a little bit of distance and scale. And the path is the brightest thing in the image. So I wanted to make sure I preserved that. And to know how much value to add to that path, um, I just left it to last. If that works for me. I like to leave the brightest areas to last. And paint everything around it. And then I know what I need to add. And these have some very dramatic shadows cast across the path so you know I, I kept very light washes and just sort of varied them I didn't paint in everything but added uh, some very wet slightly tinted washes and then um, there's sort of a gray purple that I add in you'll start to see me add it in for the shadows coming across it's a very neutral violet and now it starts to come together. Those link up with the shadows going up the embankment and coming up from the right also. This to me is what makes ordinary scenes a little more interesting. When you can find dynamic, dramatic value patterns, shadows like this. Could I have captured this a little more loosely with a little less detail? Absolutely. All in all, I think I spent maybe 45 minutes on this. It's a 5x7. This is Fabriano Artistico. And now just fiddling with some final details. But I'm pretty happy with that. Alright, so here is the finished sketch. This is, by the way, a 5x7 Fabriano Artistico sketchbook. Uh, I shared uh, this guy's name with you before. Uh, his name is Ran, and he makes these on eBay. He makes the arches or he makes uh, these Fabriano ones. And I'm going to probably try to keep this challenge small, at least for myself, uh, just to ensure that I'll be able to get these done, if you know what I mean. Now, a lot of you remember the last video where I did the micro palette and the colors I chose. I've also have just done an expanded palette. For those of you who follow me on social media already know about this where I used these six colors, but I uh, expanded it with several other choices, including some Daniel Smith Primatex. Um, so I will be sharing the colors of my palette below. And I have used those colors. A lot of you have been asking me to use the colors that were in the micro palette to paint something. And a lot of the ones that were in the micro palette I used here. So uh, this is the first successful painting with those with that palette and maybe a few extra anyway thanks everyone hope you'll follow along in the direct watercolor challenge participate if you can and uh, thank you patrons for making this channel possible you guys are the best and i will be sharing some bonus video with you over on patreon from this challenge 
So the sketchbook peaks and the video extras this month will be primarily focused on this challenge. So look for those. And we will see everybody in the next video.